Hey everybody, welcome back to Playground Sessions. I'm Phil, and today let's get into the holiday spirit, because I'm going to be showing you how to play Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. We're going to be taking a look at a Playground Sessions original arrangement at the intermediate level of this song, and in this video in particular we're going to be learning verse 1. So before we break down the hands and I show you how to play it, why don't you follow along once with just your eyes and ears as I play you the section we're going to be learning today. One, two, one, two, ready, go. Alright, let's break it down, starting with the right hand. First off, let's review our key signature and our time signature. Our key signature tells us that there is one sharp in this song, and that is an F sharp. Now that means that we are in the key of G major, or E minor, but for this particular song we're in G major. Our time signature tells us 4-4, four, four, which means 4 beats per measure. That's also known as common time, and sometimes we see that written as just a C instead of a 4-4. But either way, 4 beats per measure. Now next, let's take a look at the actual notes and rhythms in this part. But before we look at the entire section, let's just focus on the first four measures. We see a lot of the same kind of note up here, don't we? We don't see half notes, whole notes, we just see a bunch of quarter notes. And that's going to make our rhythmic jobs a lot easier. So these first four measures are our first phrase. And we've got quarter notes all the way through until the final measure of our phrase, the fourth measure of this phrase, measure eight of our song. We have all quarter notes except that final measure, which is three quarter notes and a quarter rest. And that rest is important for a couple reasons. One, it allows us to take a break in our melody. So in other words, we have a little bit of a breath where our phrase can breathe. And two, it helps because at the end of each phrase, we have to look back down to the next measure at the lower line, and that rest gives us time to look ahead. So what I want to do is play through this first four measures, this first phrase, on its own before doing the rest of the song, so we can get a sense of what these phrases are going to feel like. So let's get our hand up in position. We're going to put our thumb on G above middle C. And we're actually going to look ahead stretch our pinky up to G, an octave higher, and this is going to be our wide position for this phrase. And that's because the, so the notes that we play immediately following this thumb G are B, D, F sharp, and G, and we want to cover all of that in one position. So let's get started. I've set my metronome here to a 25 BPM, which is super slow, much slower than we would ever perform this. Uh, the normal tempo for this arrangement is 145. Our slow tempo in playground is 90. But we're going all the way down to 25 right now so I can walk you through one note at a time. So let's try this, starting with our first note on G. Then B with our two finger. Then D with our third finger. F sharp with our fourth. And our pinky up to G. Now back down to F sharp. Third finger on E, thumb on one, we're changing positions. Pinky up to A, now back down. Fourth finger on G, another one. Three on F sharp, four on G, three back to F sharp, and then one on D. Now here we've got a rest. So, hand position change right in the middle there, a little tricky. That's why the finger suggestions, those little numbers above the notes, are so helpful. Because the fingering changes will actually set you up for your hand position change, so you don't have to worry about it. Of course, you can play any of these notes with any finger you want, but it's going to make the melody a lot harder to play as a whole if you don't follow those fingering instructions. All right, let's look down at the second line, the second phrase, measures 9 through 12. Just at first glance, we can tell that our rhythms are exactly the same. Quarter notes all the way throughout until the final measure of the phrase where we have three quarter notes and a quarter rest. 
But we do see some different things in this phrase too, don't we? Measure 11 and 12, we have some accidentals. Accidentals are a, a term for sharps or flats or natural symbols that take us out of our key signature. So if we take a look at measure 11, we see a flat in there, that's an E flat. That's not in the key of G, as our key signature tells us, it just has one sharp. So that's an accidental. We've also got a B flat up here in measure 12. So something to keep your eye out for when we get down to the end of this second phrase. Let's get in position. We're actually gonna start on a high C, an octave above middle C for this next phrase. And let's go ahead and set our tempo to super slow, 25, and try this together here as well. Just the second phrase. We're gonna start with our thumb on C, pointer on E, middle on G, fourth on A, now fifth up to B, back down to A, down to G, now two on E, thumb is on C again, but this time we do E flat with two, three on G, four on A, now five on B flat, there's our other accidental, and then thumb on E flat to end this phrase, now we rest. All right, great work. So now what I think we should do is put the first phrase and the second phrase together and just play the first half of this section. So let's go ahead and highlight those. And we're gonna speed our metronome up from 25 up to 45, so a little quicker this time. All right, let's get in position. We're gonna be on a G above middle C. And remember, go ahead and get up in the entire octave position. Okay, we're starting with our thumb and let's go ahead and do this. First two phrases, ready? One two, three, go. Now B, now D, now F sharp, G, back down. Now thumb to D, pinky to A. Three on F sharp, don't forget the key signature. And thumb on D, here comes a rest, move thumb to C for the second phrase. Now we're on E, G, A, B, back down, two on E, thumb back to C, now two on E flat, five on B flat, and we'll put our thumb on E flat to end, now we rest. Good job guys, that's the first half of the verse for the right hand. Now of course we're going to try that at faster speeds along with our accompaniment and everything else, but for now let's keep moving because we're in our learning stage still for the right hand of this tune. So we're gonna start now with phrase three, right on measure 13. Let's highlight those four measures and try this at our super slow speed of 25. That's our walkthrough speed. So I'm gonna walk you through this one. We're gonna start on a high A with our fifth finger. And we're gonna follow our same rhythmic patterns here. So quarter notes until the final beat of the phrase where we rest. Um, and we're gonna stretch into a wider position for most of this. Uh, so let's go ahead and try it. Let's walk through. Ready? Starting on an A with our fifth finger. Three to F sharp. Now one on E. So we can move our third finger over to D. Now thumb down to G. Two on B three on D, four on F sharp, we're stretching wide here, five on G, four back down, and two on D. And now we'll rest. There's our third phrase right there, okay? So let's move on to our fourth phrase, and then we'll put phrases three and four together, just like we did with phrases one and two. We'll speed up, then we'll put the whole song together, and we'll build up to our normal tempo for this right hand. So, fourth phrase, let's highlight that and focus in on just that. We're gonna start with our fifth finger on B. And we're gonna play through, same rhythms. We've got some accidentals at the end here, so keep your eye out. But one thing to keep in mind is those final two measures are exactly the same as the final two measures of phrase two. So the accidentals that we played, exactly the same in both instances. All right, pinky up on high B, let's do this. 
again. Now four down to A. Back up to B. Now two to E. One on C. Two on E flat this time. Three to G. Four up to A. And five to B flat. And end with thumb on E flat. And then a rest. Way to go. All right, guys. Now, let's put phrases three and four together. Try it at a little bit of a faster tempo. We'll go up to 45 instead of 25. All right, let's get our hand up. Pinky on high A. And that's where we're going to start our third phrase. And let's play through third and fourth phrases together at 45 BPM. One, two, three, go. F sharp. Now one on E, three over. Thumb on G. Good. That's a tricky hand position change there. Now we're reaching wide. F sharp and G. Now here comes a rest. Look ahead. Pinky on B. Good. Here comes E flat. Pinky up on B flat. And there we have it. Good job. There's phrases three and four. So now what I want to do is put this whole section together and we're going to do it at our medium tempo and then our full tempo. Medium is 90. Full tempo is 145. So if you're not quite ready for that yet, please rewind and play back with this video. It's the beauty of the video lesson. Now, when you are ready, meet me back here. We're going to do this up first again, starting at half speed and we're gonna go up to full speed. All right, hands up. Starting with our thumb or one finger on a G above middle C. We're gonna get ready for measure two by putting our pinky on the octave above. I think we're ready, let's do it. One, two, ready, go. Look ahead. Flat. Look ahead. Thumb on E. Now over with three. Good. Look ahead. Pinky up. Fantastic job. There it is at the medium tempo. Now, when you're ready, full tempo. One, two, ready, go. Excellent work. There's the right hand. Now it's on to the left. Let's refresh our memories a little bit on what this left hand's supposed to sound like before we break it down and learn it. It goes like this. One, two, ready, go. There we have it. So let's break it down. Now, if we zoom out and look at this whole section, the left hand sheet music, we see a bunch of chords, right? But the good news is there's really only three chords in this chord progression, and then they repeat. So let's take a look at the three chords before putting them into the context of the song. We've got a G major chord, that's our first chord. All right, and we're gonna hold that 
for four counts. And then we're gonna repeat them, a bunch of Gs in a row. In fact, all four of the first measures, we're just playing G major chords. And you can tell one way, of course, is by looking at the notes and seeing that they're the same. But you can also tell by seeing that there is not a new chord symbol for any of those chords. We've got a G for the first chord and then nothing for the next three. That, of course, doesn't mean that there is no chord, but rather it tells you that they're the same chord. So we've got four Gs in a row. So that's our first chord. Okay, our second chord in our progression is called a C over G. Notice we've still got the pinky on G, just like we did for our G chord. So this is a C major chord inversion, and it's called C over G. That's our second chord. We do that one for two measures, as you can see. And then our final chord is a C minor over G. We're going to keep the same shape, but we're going to slide our hand back to the back of the keys so our thumb can reach this E flat on top. So we've now got G, C, E flat. That's a C minor over G, a C minor inversion. And those are our three chords. So we've got G major, C over G, C minor over G. So let's, why don't we highlight the first eight measures of this section, the first half, and walk through that. That's one time through our progression. The following eight measures are exactly the same. And it's the same progression, same rhythm, same everything. So I just want to focus in on the first half. We're going to do that at a slow speed. Then we're going to try the whole thing together. Now I'm going to set my metronome to 90 BPM, which is our medium tempo in playground sessions, because our chords here are whole notes. We don't need so much time. We don't have quarter notes playing, right? So we've got enough time at 90 BPM to walk through this. That's exactly what I want to do. So let's play through this at 90, just the first half of this. Then we're going to put it all together at full tempo. Because remember, after the first half, the second half is exactly the same. One, two, one, two, three, go. Again. Another one. And a final one. Now we're going to shift up to C and E, keeping our G on the bottom. Do it again. Now slide back, thumb on E flat. All right, let's pause there. Good job. So again, we're halfway done, but the next half is exactly the same. So why don't we go ahead and play this at full tempo? If you feel you're not quite ready yet, go back and do that first half with me at the medium tempo as many times as you need. But when you're ready, let's do it. All right, we're doing the whole section now. We're gonna do it up to speed at 145 BPM. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, go. C over G. Slide up, C minor over G. Back down to G major for four times. C over G again. Slide back, C minor over G. That's all there is to it. Our pinky never leaves this G, so we don't have to worry about moving around the keyboard. All we got to do is worry about counting the right amount shifting up back and forth like this that's all there is for the left hand so now let's put the hands together so since it's been a minute since we've heard these parts together let me go ahead and play for you one more time to review what we're going to be doing here with the hands together at full tempo and then we'll slow it down one two one two ready it. Whenever we put our hands together, the main thing we focus on, no longer the individual notes, but rather, when do the hands play together and when do they play separately? At this point, we should have each hand individually pretty well down. So what I want to talk about is how to put them together. And really, for this song and this section, it doesn't really get much easier. We've got all quarter notes in the right, all whole notes in the left, so hands are always playing together on beat one. 
That's the main takeaway, your main tip for this hands together section. You want to feel beat one of every measure very strongly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's when the hands play together. Otherwise, the left hand is holding its chord while the right hand plays steady quarter notes. And that's all there is to it. So let's do this at our medium tempo. We're gonna slow it down to 90, and we're gonna put the hands together. I'll talk you through a little as we go, but then we'll speed it back up to 145, and you will have this whole part down. So don't forget, before we break it down here, we've got all the parts to this arrangement, as well as other levels for this arrangement, rookie and advanced, over in the app. So head to playgroundsessions.com, tap this card above here in the video to take you there. All right, so we're at our medium tempo, and let's go ahead and get in position and try this. One, two, one, two, ready, go. Beat one. Again. Every beat one should feel very strong. Look ahead. Left hand change. Now slide up for C minor. Right hand comes over. Now look ahead, up to B in the right hand. And C minor. Now another thing I want you to notice is every time we have our accidentals in the right hand, the E flat, the B flat, the left hand is playing the chord with a flat in it as well, the C minor over G. So there's a helpful tip for remembering when does the right hand play those flats again? It's the same time that the left hand plays its flat. All right, let's speed our metronome back up to 145, full tempo, and let's do this. One, two, one, two, ready. Way to go! That's it. That's the whole verse one for Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. Give yourselves a hand. Well guys, once again, I'm Phil, and if you love what you learned here today, remember, hit the subscribe button to your left. We've got song lessons where we show you how to play the main sections of songs from all sorts of different artists, like Coldplay, Beethoven, Miles Davis, John Legend, The Beatles, many more. And we're also putting out theory videos where we deconstruct popular music. We talk about chord progressions, rhythms. We'll be talking about practice tips, arranging and composing tricks, all sorts of stuff. Everything related to the piano. You can find it here on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe so you don't miss what's next. And if you like what you saw today in the video, well, that was me using the Playground Sessions app. That's right, the features you saw on screen today can be at your fingertips with the full playground experience. Co-created by music legend Quincy Jones, the app has incredible interactive feedback and gaming features. Full songs broken down by sections and in different difficulty levels. And a whole music theory boot camp section, all taught by YouTube star David Sides. So click the app button on the left to learn more. All right, guys, I'm Phil, and you're watching Playground Sessions. Hit that subscribe button so I can see you for the next video.